Hi, my name is Keith Wright, and this is my 1949 Ryan Navion. Design for the Navion quickly passed hands from North American Aviation to Ryan Aviation, who produced it after World War II. Even though it was originally designed for civilians, the military found a lot of use in it as well under the L-17 designation. Today, this vintage workhorse provides a stable weekend warrior for any GA enthusiast. Let's see more Keith's 1949 Ryan Navion. I got into aviation, or got really interested in aviation, um, when I was a kid, uh, I think like everybody else, my uh, my uncle was actually worked in the space program, so I was really fascinated by that. I moved to Alaska right after high school to climb, and transportation up there everywhere is by airplane. I was flown into the glacier um, at Denali by airplane, and uh, I never really thought that I would end up as a pilot. I ended up coming back to Texas and got introduced kind of through the vintage world. Um, was introduced to a guy who had a beach stagger wing and a collection of vintage airplanes and just fell in love. Got some rides in that, decided I wanted to get my pilot's license and uh, proceeded from there like, like a lot of people. It took a while in the beginning, um, saving up money to, to take lessons when I could. And when I realized at some point I wanted to get a little more serious about it, I ended up buying an airplane before I finished my private. So I bought a Piper Colt and um, over the years, I've owned a Colt and a couple of Tri-Pacers and a Pacer. And I love the flying milk stool. Um, spent a little time in the corporate aviation world, but my, my love is vintage airplanes. And then I found this uh, 1949 Navion up in Michigan. Uh, it had come out of a three-year restoration. I'd flown a Navion years ago, but never thought I would be a, a low-wing retractable gear guy. I was kind of a high-wing backcountry guy. The price was right, the airplane had great history, so um, I purchased it and uh, brought it home in uh, early 2020. So at the end of World War II, um, North American was looking like many companies was, or were, they thought that the pilots coming back from overseas were going to want to buy airplanes and continue to fly. They designed this airplane, it was actually the P-51 design team that put this together. Um, and designed it not just as a civilian aircraft, but as a military liaison airplane. So the L-17 is the military designation of a Navion. They produced them in 1946, 47, sold the rights to Ryan when they started working on F-86 Sabre jet production. Um, Ryan took it down to San Diego. They produced airplanes in 1948, 49, and I believe 50. This is an A model. It has an E225 engine, which is the earliest version of the 0470, the E185 and, and E225. Uh, Ryan ended up putting a bigger, a geared Lycoming engine on the B models. They are built as a, a very rugged, a heavy hauling airplane. It was actually built as a, a stole airplane, believe it or not. They have got really beefy landing gear. Uh, it's a monocoque wing. It does not have a spar in the front. You can look from the back right into the leading edge of the wing. Just an incredible airplane, that kind of that P-51 heritage that North America built into it. One of the things that makes the Navion different is that, uh, well, it has a sliding canopy. That was part of its demise, I think, in the civilian world because uh, the Beach Bonanza had come out around the same time, which uh, with the same engine was a little faster, couldn't carry as much. This is a heavy hauling airplane, but it was easier for ladies of the day to get in and out of a door over, over climbing over the sill of the airplane in a skirt. That was, that was apparently very awkward and they didn't really like that. But uh, there is a photograph out there of a Navion in Alaska with the canopy completely removed and a full-sized refrigerator strapped into the back of it upright being flown into a remote cabin. So the saying is, if you can get it in the airplane, we can probably take off. Douglas Aircraft bought Navions to fly parts around. Uh, a lot of the famous pilots, uh, Bob Hoover, used to, when he was a North American test pilot, would fly a Navion from the LA area out to Edwards Air Force Base. So they, they just have a long history. Um, MacArthur had a, a, his liaison airplane in Korea was a Navion. And there's a picture of one taking off from an aircraft carrier, uh, which is pretty amazing. So the, this Navion uh, cruises at about 140 to 150 miles an hour. It's got a big fat wing, so it's not as fast as say the Bonanza, but can carry, carry quite a load. It's a true four place airplane. She stalls with flaps down around 54 miles an hour. So 
you can really get them into a real short field um, and get them out pretty quick. About You can get them back off the ground in less than 800 feet in the right conditions. Uh, so it's pretty amazing for as big of an airplane as it is. Uh, she has uh, about a 900 pound useful load. Uh, this particular airplane carries 60 gallons of fuel, 40 in the main tanks, and then 20 in an aux tank under the back seat. I plan for about 13 gallons an hour with the E225. Uh, I can get it down to 11 if I give up a little speed and, and pull it back if I've got a good tailwind. Interesting thing about this too is it, the, it has a pressure carburetor, which kind of acts as single, single stage fuel injection. So it's not like a normal carburetor, like fuel injection, it pulls the fuel it needs and then what it doesn't use, it puts back in the main tank. I would like to say that if you're interested in Navions and you're going to purchase one or you found one you think is a great deal, it is super important to find somebody who knows how to work on these airplanes, familiar with the airplanes. And it's not a knock against any, you know, IA or AMP out there, but if they don't have specific Navion knowledge, um, you might want to find somebody who does. This particular airplane I found uh, brought home after a three-year restoration. The owner had spent almost $100,000 on it. And uh, I picked it up at a really good price, fortunately, because when I got it back here in our first annual, we found that a lot of things were not done correctly. Um, so I've put a lot of, of money into it, including uh, redoing the engine. So I would like to thank my IA, who's kept me in the air, and his name is Matt Jackson. Uh, incredible guy. He, he's the Navy on guy. Uh, fortunately, he is now here in Texas instead of California. But uh, he and his crew have done a, a great job in keeping this airplane in the air for me. Perfect. You ready to go fly? I am. Let's do it. It is a little chilly, so. I'll make sure my hair is not in it. There you go. <laughs> I'll quiet us down a bit too. I'm just gonna let some oil temp build before we taxi. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cycle the flaps up. Check, that checks our hydraulic. They actually yeah. use the wing dihedral off this airplane for the T-28. Huh, okay. And then these are original visors, which are really hard to find. Oh, I didn't even realize that was a visor. But it's got the, the checklist printed. Uh-huh. And then, you know, your speed's here. That's cool. That's and a cool little vintage and Yeah, this is from the 40s. So. That's so cool. So I think we're, I'm ready to taxi if you are. Our, temps, our oil temp's coming up. I am ready. Let's go get a, go down to the runway and get a run up done. Alrighty, run up time. Run up time. So we're going to bring this up. Check. Cycle the prop. Some warm oil in there. So I am ready if you are. I am absolutely ready. I'm excited to see her perform. Yeah, I think you're going to like it. It's super stable. Midway traffic, Navy on 07 Kilo, departing runway 36 with right crosswind departure to the east. Positive rate, you're up. Wow, I mean, you couldn't even tell we just had almost a direct cross when this thing was so stable. It's really stable. Midway traffic, Navy on zero, seven kilo, right cross with departure to the east. Midway. All right, and we're out of here. So we're gonna pull back. Manifold pressure, and then we're gonna bring the prop back just a little bit. Okay. Let her accelerate. So what are your cruise settings usually then for RPM and manifold? I keep the, the manifold pressure between 24 and 25. Okay. Um, you know, obviously the higher we are, the more right, right, right. throttle I've got in. But uh, I'll pull the, the RPMs back to around 24. That's the other, th my other complaint about the panel layout is you're in the pilot seat, you're looking at all these yeah. gauges obliquely yeah. at an angle, so it's like, what does that really say? Right, you're getting that parallax right. views. 
I say even from this side, it's right in front of me, but it's down so low that the, you know, with it being set back in the panel, you know, your gauges, it almost blocks just a little bit of it. Right. And it's still, I feel like, I, you know, you having to move your eyes so much. I would rather it be like in my upper right or upper left. Oh, that's a little bumpy. <laughs> yeah. Vulture. I see him. Hey, I'm not complaining. You know what it's like in the summer around here. Oh, man. <laughs> As we speed up here. She likes to fly on what they call the step, so a little bit nose down. I was just, yep, just thinking about that. I was going to feel like it pitched down a little bit. Right, and if you're, if you're not in that attitude, mm -hmm. if you're in what you would think of as a normal, you know, normal attitude, then you look down and you're climbing. Right. And she has a, she likes to climb anyway. Like uh -huh. sometimes I'll be set up in cruise and realize, oh, you know, I just gained a few hundred <laughs> feet because she's wanting to climb. Before you know it, you glance down and go, oopsies. The sight picture reminds me a lot of the Grumman. Yeah. Out of what I have in my repertoire to compare it to, you know, and how it sits up higher and it kind of has that nose down attitude it's feel right. during that cruise. And then also, if you look around, like the visibility of this thing yeah. is just amazing. It really is. I could imagine how one of these with just a plexiglass canopy would be amazing. Uh, one of the other things I like about it is we are sitting so far forward that you can still see down in front yeah. of the wing. Right. You don't have a very big blind spot there. You really don't. That was one of the selling points for me was, you know, I remembered that from flying the Navy on before. It's like, yeah, you do have good visibility on the ground. It just, it does disappear underneath your wing. Yep. But it's not like some other airplanes where I've flown where you literally can't see anything. Right, where, where you're literally happens. sitting in the middle of the wing. You're right. sitting on top of it, yeah. Okay. Plenty of visibility. I can see anything I'd want to see. It's real easy to lean forward and see above us as right. well, too, which is nice. We have our potential conflict on your side. My side. Should be high. Oh, right got there. it sight. Right it. over top. Got it. Cool. That is, uh, I will say this, it's the one thing I do like about ADS-B, but yeah. I think the, the thing people have to remember is not all airplanes have electrical systems. If you're a vintage person, you're flying around in something that you've hand propped, mm -hmm. you're not going to show up, and I think too many people get reliant on looking for that for traffic. Mm -hmm. We have ground speed right now of 154. Heck yeah. What are the winds like up here? Um, I don't think it's that bad. We're, we're at about 145 air, uh, airspeed. Oh, cool. This is pretty calm this up is, here. This is Lake Waxahachie. Oh, nice. A little hazy today, but not bad. Oh, not too bad at all. There is, if you look down the creek coming up in front of us here. Yeah. You see old, that's an old railroad trestle. Oh. That's on oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the MKT line which they, the Katy Trail in Dallas uh -huh. is named for that. Huh, that is so cool. As you're pointing this out, just to circle back, it is so cool how much visibility I have. Like, I'm still watching this bridge go by us, and it's right under us. Uh, would you like to flutter? Sure, I'll try it. Tell me whenever you've got her. All right, I got controls. Airplane is yours. I got the airplane. All right, we'll see if I lose our altitude on us here. Feel free to trim. Cool, got it. I was going to say, taking the airplane from you tripped out like this, I mean, it's not even the smoothest day in the world, and this thing is just holding super altitude, stable. super stable. You can see there, it's got it's got that positive stability. When I let go and that wing kind of drops with the thermal, it comes right back up like it's supposed to. That's awesome. Yeah, and then also you're benefiting from that flight interconnect a little bit too. Right. Which, I'll tell you what, on a long cross country, and I've done a four hour, four and a half hour leg in this thing. Uh-huh when I needed to just rest my feet <laughs> and uh, up at altitude with a with a nice uh, tailwind doing a ground speed of like 180 miles an hour and it's smooth, uh -huh. it, it's so comfortable to fly. It's such a stable yeah. platform. It makes a great IFR platform. Yeah. Uh, the saying is in the Navion community, you've seen one Navion, you've seen one Navion. <laughs> That's interesting, yeah. You could have an E-185, an E-225, an O-470, an I-O-470, uh -huh. an I-O-520, or an I-O-550 in these things these days. That's crazy. Somebody even put an I-O-720 in one once. That's crazy. You know, the big engine makes it, it, it performs like nothing else. Right, I It's imagine. amazing. All right, we just crossed over 45. Okay, should I turn back? No, no, we're fine. Okay. Not I don't know my geography around here super well, you, so... Unless you want to. And what we got coming up here is the Trinity River. Okay. That comes out of downtown. Right. And then out here, and, and something a lot of people don't know is uh, they tried to make the Trinity River navigable at one point from the coast up to Dallas. 
because they thought they were going to transport things from the I coast. I definitely didn't know that. Yeah, so there's a <laughs> series of locks and dams uh -huh. on the Trinity, and some of them are still here. And out here, sometimes I'll fly out here, and the two or three that you can see right out in this area. Uh -huh. It's really cool. Huh. What is an interesting little piece of Texas history? I didn't know that they were trying to do that. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of bank in her. Why not? Yeah, you bank as much Feel as you want. Feel her out. Wow, it just is so smooth into that roll. Oh. See, there's Lancaster right ahead, of, right ahead, straight ahead of us oh, right yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. In fact, we'll switch over to their frequency. Yeah, okay. Careful, we don't start climbing kind of right there. Soft point. I am kind of happy to watch myself again with my sight picture of what I'm used to versus. Keeping that nose down a little bit. I'll show you my airplane. You got the airplane. So, one of the cool things about this is... Feel that? Wow. It's so incredibly stable in this turn, though. And then you roll it right out. It's a very good airplane, I would say, um, to bring a passenger up in that maybe isn't super comfortable with flying or maybe like a first time flight because it's oh. very comfortable to sit in. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the things before I brought her home, I was like, uh, we had a guy at that airport that uh, wanted to go for a ride one day with us. And I'm uh -huh. like, great, because I want to see what it's like for the passenger. Right. He was a big guy. Right. So we threw him back there. I couldn't even tell he was in the airplane. I can imagine it. So what do you, um, I know this is just a BFR airplane and it's a hobby. What do you usually do? Just like a weekend cruiser? Any places in particular that are your favorites to go to? Or to, Honestly, part of the reason I bought this particular aircraft was as a cross-country machine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great cross-country platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a wildlife photographer, I spend a lot of time in Montana and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. uh, I specialize in photographing grizzlies. I do wolves too. Um, uh, actually coyotes up there. They're one of my favorite animals, coyote. Mm -hmm. And so one of the reasons for buying this was to have a platform to be able to take me and all my photo equipment right. on a much shorter trip to get to Montana and Wyoming than driving. Right. So I should be able, um, you know, in a, in a perfect world, mm -hmm. uh, get up to like Cody, Wyoming in about seven hours or so. Oh, that's not too bad at all. I'm excited to see uh, some landing capabilities out of it. You want to maybe show us off a short field landing? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Midway traffic, Navy on zero, seven kilo, three miles to the east. Crossing midfield, center, left down wind, runway three six, full stop midway. So I'll start slowing down here a little bit. Dropping down. I tend to cross midfield a little higher than pattern altitude. Right. Go ahead and rich in the mixture up here. Start bringing our prop back in. Power off. Okay, we're pattern altitude. Neutralize this descent. Midway traffic, Navy on zero, seven kilo over midfield, entering left downwind runway, three six full stop midway. You're down? Oh, I can feel the pedals hop a little bit. When yeah, they're. They're yeah. already locked. That's crazy. That was like that. All right. What we're going to do is bring in a little bit of flaps. Midway traffic, Navy on zero, seven kilo, turning left base, runway, three, six, full stop, midway. And midway traffic, Navy on zero, seven kilo, circling short final, runway, three, six, midway. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, wow. Over a thousand feet per minute down like that. It's a slip. A little bit of a crosswind. There we go. She's down. Now, I don't. I could get on the brakes and stop her really fast. Uh huh. But I don't like to get on the brakes on this. Okay. Well, that's awesome. What a sweet airplane. Thank you for showing it oh, off you and bet. tell me about its history and all that. Let me fly it. That was awesome. My pleasure.
right. Well, thank you again, Keith, for taking me up and showing off the Navion. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> Did I, I say it right? Navion. Navion. Showing off the Navion. It was an awesome airplane, and it was awesome to fly. Yeah, it was good flying with you. I appreciate it. Awesome. We'll do it again sometime. Sounds great. <laughs> All right, and you guys know the drill. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and drop a like. Um, if you have an airplane you would like to feature on Flying Doodles, make sure to send me an email, dakota at flyingdoodles.com. And big shout out to our Patreons who make it possible. Uh, check us out there, patreon.com slash flyingdoodles.